All together. Oh Lord, may your hand lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May all be happy. May all be peaceful. May all be enlightened and cultured. May all attain perfection. May peace be established in the three bodies of man. May peace be established in the three worlds. May peace be established everywhere. May truth be our religion. May service be our worship. May knowledge be our breath. May world be our family. May yoga and meditation be our way. May our eyes see happy and noble things. May our ears hear happy and truthful words. May our tongues be sweet and truthful. May our bodies be divine instruments. May noble thoughts come to us from all corners of the universe. May we never leave God. May God never leave us. Om peace and love. Om peace and health. Om peace and enlightenment. Oh. So we are continuing the series of subtle yoga. And the first part was talking about the Ida, the Pingala, the last time we were talking about Kundalini, we were talking about Ida and Pingala, and what Kundalini is, the basics. Today we will start with each chakra, and it's the first chakra will be the root chakra. The root chakra is at the base of your spine, it's called Mool Daha. Mool Daha. Mulada. Mulada chakra. It's one of the seven main chakras. There are many more chakras in your physical body, but the main ones we're talking about. In yoga, we talk about seven main ones. In the Kabbalah, they talk about 12 main ones. Okay. Uh, the kundalini energy is at the root chakra. And you can think about it as, as being three and a half coils like a snake. It's coiled like a snake. That means it's the snake is ready to move its head upward. Where is it located? It's located not in your physical body. It is located in your etheric body. If I did an autopsy, I wouldn't find it. <laughs> okay, so that's not where. At the base of the spine, it's an astral counterpart of your physical body. You have an astral counterpart of your physical body that people can see in colors, etc. Okay, and they can see the energies and how they're flowing in the astral plane. I don't, so don't worry. Okay. Now, once we awaken this energy, and now the awaken means bring it up more. It is available in everyone. The energy is available. And the chakras are open to some degree in everyone. But what we want to do is open these energy centers fully. When they are open, they're only partially open or they're distorted. And each center has certain qualities, emotional, spiritual, and physical qualities that it represents not only, but also works with you. And this is very important to understand. The chakra is closed. There are so many... Uh, 
qualities that you're missing out on. Inherently, we are, we have the possibility of being divine. And if we re raise the Kundalini, the idea is for that beautiful energy that's, you have the seed energy of all your fabulous qualities residing at the base of your spine. It's all there. It's in there. You are not left without it. It takes work to bring it up. It is not work necessarily with a physical body. It's not work necessarily with a mental body or the emotional body. It's a work with all three. It's not just meditation. It's not just yoga, because this, this rises in everyone if they're working. The easiest way to rise it is through, through devotion. That's why most of the churches go through devotion. But it's a, once it becomes more alive or awakened, it incre increases in intensity. Now, the negative, the root chakra is closely related to our physical and mental security. Same way, when you have a lower back ache, it has to, no, it is, it is an apparent reason for insecurity. We have so many lower back aches, and that's part of insecurity of our physical and mental and emotional physical. Same thing with the root chakra, okay? The negative effects of not opening the root chakra, as explained by um, in Scripting Your Destiny uh, by Rana Herman and Archangel Michael, Michael, is a lack of vitality, depression, helplessness, hate, resentment, of anybody and anything in life, lacking security, having survival or scarcity issue, and not being grounded. Now we see a lot of hate going on. Know that this is the root chakra. It hasn't been opened. Once you open it and you allow a more flow of energy through it, you will automatically ha <clears throat> have the qualities of strength, truthfulness, courage, integrity, power in thought and action. Now this should, knowing this alone, should want you to start working on this subtle energy. Okay? Most people are not even aware that their chakras are closed. It is not being taught. Okay? In yoga we teach it. Hatha yoga itself increases it, increases the flow of the energies, okay? So that's why people change when they do hatha yoga. Meditation changes it. No, the nerves of each chakra can be stimulated to function and slowly activate the kundalini. Now, they, they have a root, and they're sometimes referred to as a lotus. They have a root. And the root is at the sushumna, or it correlates with your spinal cord. But the, the chakra itself is outside of your physical body. Okay, But it will affect the various organs in that area. It will affect the emotional part. So with other words, we're not just living in the physical body. We're not just living in the mental body. We're not just living in the emotional body. We're living in all of the three bodies. And these chakras allow us to access all of these three, allow us to access our higher self, allow us to go further. The potential, that is the seed atom of your individual wonderful being is at the root chakra. It's all there. It's all in there. You are lacking nothing. You're just suppressing it. You have it. You got to activate it. You got to arouse it. 
you got to bring it out. The Lord gave you everything you possibly could need to reach sainthood. Mm, isn't that interesting? It's all in there. Yeah, very important to understand. Once you work through, the easiest way for a yogi is meditation and one-pointed concentration. And that way, once you concentrate on the chakra, on the approximate area where it is located, you will begin to act the ask the nerves to be stimulated. Remember, where your mind goes in the physical body, it stimulates. Mm -hmm. That you learn through yoga. Now, each chakra has many different qualities, and they are they're very defined in the yogic scriptures. Now, Madhaji, my guru, painted these, has these big paintings. She had an artist do it according to what she saw in her meditation. Rather... Chakra, the word chakra means wheel, and a wheel has spokes. And, or you can look at it as a pedals. So the Muldahar chakra has four spokes, but we can sometimes talk, call it pedals. We sometimes call it lotus flower because that's a much nicer way of looking at it. Okay. And when you see it, when people that see it, see it almost like a horn of plenty. So that it almost looks like this. So a lotus is more, more conducive to that. But astrally, it is a physical, it's a circle and it has spokes, okay, of multicolors, all right? Now each chakra has a circular quality. All right. And so you start think, meditating on it. When we have a book on ebook on the invisible psychic lotuses where the, the printed book is gone by now that had these. So everybody can down, put it in. We also have a PDF. You can either look at it on your iPad and meditate. Or you can print it out from there. All right. Now, very interesting. The root chakra has four petals, and the bij mantra, the bij mantra is lum, lum, L A M. So when you're meditating on it, you want to get your mind into lum, 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 lum. Sound vibration activates, and so each each Chakra has a sound, beach mantra. Beach means the smallest of seed. The seed mantra is slum. Okay. The deity is Ganesh. If you can look at it, it's kind of low. The deity is Ganesh. And next to Ganesh is, of course, Dakini, the female. Um, the riding animal is an elephant. And these are all various things. Uh, in the book, you have a whole list, the smell, which, and where it's located, and so forth. So these are all various things you can meditate on to keep your mind busy as you're trying to activate, because the mind likes to run all over the place. And so we use so many techniques. Every person is different. Some people like sound meditation. Some people like silence. Some people are visual. You have to go with what feels good for you. There is not one way to meditate for everyone. That's ridiculous. You're all individuals, I hope. No? You're all unique, I hope. <laughs> Unless you were brainwashed. Now, when you do this kind of meditation, uh, 
it is a, there is a reason why we start with a prayer before meditation. The end, we have heard many times, if you activate the chakra, it can be dangerous, right? People have heard this. Uh, the root chakra will, it is, you know, the, uh, the element is earth because you're sitting right on the earth with this. The element is earth. But it, you can feel heat. You can feel piercing. You can feel that your body is going into um, bandhas. Um, all of those things can happen. It never happens when I teach it because I tell you, the object of those energies is to rise. You want to bring them up. And the first time you feel anything like that, you immediately ask the energy to come to your heart center. Always ask the energy to come to your heart center. That's why you say a prayer to begin with. That the divine resides in the heart. You always want to bring it into the heart center because you don't want the energy to descend. Now, a lot of people like the energy to descend because it gives you an orgasmic feeling. We don't need that. There's another, that's another way of doing that, not through Kundalini Yoga, okay? Once the postures, these energy centers, we call them energy centers, begin to awaken a little bit, the energy will begin to rise. And if you, this can also be done with physical practices. For example, we have certain yogic postures where the, the heel of your foot sits and your perineum sits directly on top of the heel of the foot in a cross-legged position. It is at the perineum that this energy is residing and therefore you, you put that, you activate that. And in your, it is, even though it's not physical, it can be activated physical. Some people come into um, lotus pose and then they swing and then they bounce up and down onto the floor trying to stimulate it and concentrate on that chakra. None of that is necessary. Meditate with a good intention of raising it to your heart center. Now you might feel the heat, but allow it to flow and there's nothing wrong with feeling the heat, you will feel. And you get that heat also sometimes when you're doing Hatha Yoga, the internal heat, right? Don't you get that? You sweat, it's 60 degrees in there and you're sweating. What is that? What is that? That's the internal heat, there's nothing wrong. And, and if it comes up too much and you feel that you can't bring it to the heart, then you have to do physical exercises to release it rather than allowing it to descend again. Okay. And that's why what power yoga that brings the heat up right in their sun salutes. Surya Namaskar one and Surya Namaskar two in power yoga bring up the Kundalini like that. Okay. But then you have to practice 25 different poses. That's a must. They don't let you out of the class unless you do that. And that's two hours. Okay. And so you're working out the energy. You're not allowing it to descend. You're working it out. I prefer. It does clean the, there's nothing wrong with cleaning it. I prefer you bring it into the heart. That's my, my way. Other people use different ways. So I have my preference. Other people have other preferences. If you're into power yoga or what they call ashtanga yoga, uh, then you have to do the 25 poses to work out the, the energy, 
to work out the energy. That's why it's absolutely have to practice all of them. Don't just bring it up and leave it hanging somewhere. Bring it to the heart or work it out. Okay? That's very important. And that way you will never, ever have any negative effect of raising the kundalini. Before we incarnate, you decided, not just you, your guides, your guardian angel, sat down and decided what you were going to experience in this lifetime. Did you realize that? No? And which lessons do you want to learn in this lifetime? Okay? Now, what do you want to focus on? What karma you want to work out? What lessons you have to learn? And these are usually decided as trying to get back to the source. So you're choosing that. And then you go to your friends that you have incarnated with before, and you say, well, Barry, will you be my father the next time around? And he goes, and do, and, nudge me about this or be abusive or whatever and they'll and they say no i don't want to do that but lovingly agree so you choose your parents you choose the time to be incarnated you choose the day the month the place the situation so that you can work out all, all the negative, usually it is the negatives or the suffering and the pain in your last life. That's what we usually. And so other, the, the, the souls that you incarnate with, they lovingly have agreed to play along with you and vice versa. It's a, it's a most magnificent interaction between everyone. Okay. So nothing ever happens. But when you get to be in, when you incarnate into this little physical body, you forget all about that. Yeah, that's, you know, bad enough you're here already. You're shocked. Boom. Can't even talk. Can't think. Can only scream. Only be hungry. And with, with that trauma, but you do still have contact with the other world a little bit, thank God. So you're looking at the angels and the, uh, the, thank God for that. That's still allowed. The veil is thin when you're a child until the parents go, what are you seeing? You're full of baloney. There's nothing there. I don't see anything. And then they shut the veil down. Okay. Thank God for that. Otherwise, what a shock to come back into this little thing. But then you have a loving mother, hopefully, maybe not, depending on what your learning experience is. Mm. So when you're working with the root chakra, you have to be working with what you were supposed to learn from your parents. The root, the beginning. Okay. You got to learn. What were you supposed to learn from your parents? Mm. So you wish to ask and review questions like, what positive traits did my father mirror to me? What negative traits did my papa mirror to me? What positive traits did my mother mirror to me? What negative traits did my mother mirror to me? Who in our life? And then, because of this insecurity, who, what is happening now in your life? Who is taking your power away and why? Because mm. this is insecurity. This is the root chakra. And I don't know anyone who's sitting here who has 100% security. You still have to work on it. Each chakra needs to be opened. Get that security going. Who took... Who in our life wanted to control us 
and take our power away? And how did you handle it? Did you, were you able to handle it? Or do you still feel disempowered because of what happened maybe 10 years ago? Those are the questions we need to ask when you're working with the root chakra. It's not just meditating on the root chakra. It's doing the work as well. Did I use energy? After, if, okay. Especially, are there power struggles in your relationships? Parents, siblings, loved ones, partners? Mm. And why are they there? Once that chakra is open, you won't have any of these. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Because the positive qualities will come. And remember, when you have any of these, it is not only from this lifetime. So don't blame. Okay, You never know where it came from. You don't know what karma it was. Thank God. You'd be overwhelmed with knowing your past. Some people go into past, and they like doing that. I have enough problems with this life. I don't need to know what's in my past life. <laughs> but I know some people that go have past life regression, and they, they, they like it, okay? And it works for them, and they begin to understand how they are now because of past life regression. Okay, so whatever is for you, you don't go by me, I prefer it this way, all right? What thought Why are, are we blaming others instead of taking responsibility? That's another question for this chakra. Mm. Are we using illness to gain attention? A lot of people use that. Okay. What thought, belief, or fear is keeping us from becoming the best we can be? Are you the best you can be? Know that if you are not, there is some thing. Fear or belief system that you have. Mostly it's fear. What are we afraid of? Just because you review these things doesn't mean the chakra is going to open. But these things have to be questioned for this chakra. They'll be questioned again for the next one as well. <laughs> so you're not going to go all get it in one chakra. <laughs> okay. But these are things you want to look at. When you meditate on this chakra, you want to also look at these things. And then, after you have meditated and worked with the chakra for three, four weeks, doing it once a day for a couple of minutes is useless. Three, four weeks on one chakra, the first round, the first round. Then you go all the way up and then you start again. <laughs> okay? Once you review, then find other positive qualities. Have you gained some of the positive qualities? Because, believe it or not, this is the fastest way of getting rid of it. Because the energy is coming in there, and those positive qualities are latent within you. And by meditating on the chakras, those positive qualities can begin to sprout. 
much easier than having to work with it on the mental level. Because it's inherently in you. And you're asking that energy to flow. Okay? So to, if you want to get rid of junk that you have accumulated over the lifetimes, this is a wonderful way. Okay? Now the color of this chakra is red. And in order for me to, or for you to uh, think about that you're working with this chakra, wear something red for the time you are working with that chakra. And I'm going to say that about each and every one of them. So you're thinking about working on this chakra for four to five weeks. Wear something red. So during the day, when you look at that red, you're going to go, oh, I have to work on that chakra. You want something to remind you. And remember, it's red. Until it, until it has developed to a certain uh, frequency, that red stays red. And then it changes. Once it's open to a certain degree, it begins to change. But start with red. Okay? And visualize that red at the base of your spine. And visualize it strongly to activate the energy. You want to go knocking on the chakra and say, Hello, I want to get a, a come on, wake up. After several weeks, begin to look and see the changes in your circumstances. What made me angry? That's red, isn't it? Anger is red. Ooh, we talk about anger. That's red in color. Isn't that amazing that we call it red? Well, that's coming from right down there. Okay. Okay. Did, did I use this energy to be fearful, hateful, or resentful? Because the more energy you have, you can go either direction. Energy is energy. It doesn't say it has to be good or and It's where you direct it. Did you bring up that energy and bring it to a positive? Or did you bring up that energy and cre create anger, hate, resentful? Aha. Uh -huh. So you can bring that energy up and intensify that. So be careful. Be careful. Your yogis. This is not taught to normal people. You're abnormal. Did you know that? <laughs> no, you're super normal. <laughs> okay. Did I use this energy positively for strength, willpower, courage? Aha! Use it for strength, willpower, and courage, not for hate. Not for any of resentment and all of that. So, you have to come to the conclusion that this kundalini energy does not flow up there only through meditation or concentration on that chakra, but most importantly through self-reflection and, and most Sincere desire for change. Sincere desire for change. Now, you have noticed that everybody who takes yoga on a regular basis changes because the chakras open automatically. And when the chakras open, they make you change. And people say, I've changed for the better. I have this, I have that, and so forth. So they, the changes will happen even automatically. Okay? But when you work on them, these changes accelerate. All right? And make sure that when you bring up this kind of energy, because it's powerful, this red energy is powerful, that you channel it in the right direction. Because your inclination for negativity can bring it into the wrong direction as well. And if you use it in the wrong direction, it will shrivel back up. Okay. That's the beauty. Thank God for that. But some people who have had open chakras have done horrible things in life. Okay. 
They've had that energy. So, your sincere desire to become the best that you can possibly be. Can I have a vote of confidence here? Does everybody want to be the best that they can be? Not of course. Some people don't like change. Some people want to hate the neighbor. Because then they feel superior. You want to be the best you can be. And then you don't need to hate anybody. Because you're okay. You only hate somebody when you don't feel okay. okay. You only put down somebody if you don't feel okay. But if you want to be the best you can be, then you have power, you have self-confidence, you have all of the wonderful things, and you can take that red energy and make it happen. Mm. Okay. So that's what, when you study the chakras, and that's why subtle yoga we usually don't teach to the masses because it can lead into either direction. The power is power. Power is power. You can take power and you can make it positive or you can make it negative. Okay? So that's... So t always take it to your heart. And when you take it to your heart... It will always be positive. Simple. But if you want that red energy down there and you want it down there, that's when you might have a problem. That's when they say energy like that, that rises like that, can be dangerous. No, it's not dangerous if you think, if you feel the energy activating, which you will. There will be a physical effect. <clears throat> of some sort. Some people feel it, some people don't feel it. There will be a physical effect that you may feel. And just say, come up into the heart. That's all. And it will. Know that you have control over every bit of energy. It's your mind has to take control. Some people love it down there because they can increase their hate, their desires, their passions. And this is a, a center of passion as well. Okay? And when this is very active in a negative manner, it presents yourself with passion that you will not be able to control. So always bring it to the heart. And you will never have any problem. Ever. Know that to be true. So with that, oops, I went over time. Oh Oh Shanti 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 Oh, it's not turning off. Oh, no. Hmm.